So, I've been receiving many comments and questions in the last one year or so along the lines of, Hey Chiking, have your opinions around Alibaba actually changed? Why are you still holding onto this Alibaba bag? So the fundamentals of Alibaba are clearly shaken. Look at their margins, look at their growth. You are definitely going to lose money. Have your conviction or thesis wavered? In fact, Alibaba is currently even cheaper than when it IPO'd back in 2014. So they have essentially wiped out 8 years of gains. 8 years of gains, my friends. Let that sink in for a moment. So in this video, I'll walk you through my thought process of Alibaba as an investment in the year 2022 and what are my thoughts thus far. So if you were to allow me to rewind back time, I've bought my first starting position in Alibaba in late 2020 and I've been averaging down since. So I've been following the stock for close to two years now and my YouTube channel is a testament to it. So I probably know a thing or two. So for those of you who haven't been following, Alibaba, alongside many other Chinese tech companies, went through a series of abuse by the stock market since 2020. And like they said, if a stock is down 60%, don't worry, it has another 50% more to go. And that's exactly what happened to many of these Chinese tech names in 2022. So the first round of intense sell-down actually came in during March where the market were essentially trying to quote-unquote price in bad news after bad news from the perpetual lockdown with no end in sight to a very poor economic outlook and where the world essentially moved on from COVID to regulatory concerns pressing many of these companies by the neck and also the constant gyration due to the delisting risk. And of course, last but not least, there is no price too low for political risk. So that was also when Liu He, who is the then vice premier of the PRC, came out to voice public support for the tech industry for the first time ever. And that was what sent the stocks skyrocketing back up again. And they were up at least 10 to 15% a day. Thereafter, the stock just went sideways until the October period, where we had the party congress, where international spectators on the sidelines came together to celebrate the demise of China as Chairman Xi fixed the cabinet with a bunch of loyalists. And that was the nail in the coffin where Xi has essentially lost his way. So the two or three days right after the party congress was where many of these tech stocks were trading at 52 weeks low as investors just totally lost confidence. So in hindsight, it seemed like a pretty good buying opportunity at a momentary bottom, but we shall observe how they perform in 2023. So what have I been doing? Contrary to popular belief, I haven't been engaging in your typical DCA approach. So I've been buying at pretty erratic intervals, and as far as possible, I'll try to conserve cash on the sidelines and not just deploy it blindly. So the last blow I dealt was that Monday, right after the party congress, where I deployed most of the cash that I've reserved for the year, and I was practically left with my underwear. So I actually bought 1,000 Alibaba shares at around 62 Hong Kong dollars, and 200 shares of Tencent at around 216 Hong Kong dollars. So I think it is also fair that I stay transparent and show you how abysmal of my stock performance is after being with the stock market for two years, specifically in the Chinese tech industry. So currently, I have around 105 BABA shares with a cost basis of around $154 and 3,200 Alibaba shares on the Hong Kong exchange with a cost basis of around 102. So if I were to convert everything to the ADR version, that would translate to around 505 ADRs at a cost basis of around 116.50 cents. And I'm currently down around $14,000 on this hot mess. So I'd just like to clarify that I'm currently on slight leverage at about 1.05 times because I essentially sold a put on Alibaba at a relatively high strike price previously and I was assigned the 500 Hong Kong shares prematurely. So I'm not going to spend too much time talking about option pricing and option um, strategy in this particular video. But if you guys are interested, feel free to leave in the comment section down below. Um, I'll gauge if there is enough interest to warrant a video separately. So for long time viewers, um, you should know by now that I'm strongly against playing with options and going on to leverage. So truth be told, I'm just trying to figure things out. And if I don't try, I never know. So I'll give you guys an update if I have better insights in the future.
Now that we have figured out what roughly happened to Alibaba in 2022 and where my bias and position lies, let's focus on the good and the ugly of Alibaba moving into 2023. So as always, let's start with the bad. So there are five key areas of concern and the last point is the most contentious of them all. PE ratio, future growth rates, competition, delisting, and of course, politics. So the only thing more contentious than politics is when you don't smash the like button after watching this video for so long. This is crazy. Weibo just extended the latest sign up reward and it has never been better. So you can get up to 150 US dollar cash voucher if you fund and trade your Weibo account today. All you have to do is to sign up for a new account with the link below and deposit at least 2,000 Singapore dollars and execute one buy trade for a stock or ETF and one option. And that's a whooping 10.5% ROI on your initial capital. So for those of you who have been sitting on the sidelines, I think this is a sign to get yourself motivated. So Weibo prides itself on zero commission trading. So let's stop paying commissions and use them to buy more shares. On top of that, Weibo has also recently allowed for a zero fee subscription and also redemption of mutual funds. If you need another reason to sign up, Weibo is also giving out attractive referral rewards if you're to get your friends to sign up using your own referral code. Of course, for those of you without an account, you should do so with mine first. Wink wink. Don't let this 10.5% ROI slip away so easily. Link will be in the description. Thank you Weibo for sponsoring this video. So circling back to the five problems. Number one, a high PE ratio. Yes, you have heard it right. Alibaba has a PE ratio of more than 120, even though everyone tells you that Chinese tech is deeply undervalued. So what's going on? Long story short, due to the way Alibaba has to account for their earnings, the number is inflated astronomically. So I've done a 10 minutes video accounting for the difference here and how you should go about better understanding the PE ratio. But based on analyst estimates for Alibaba's upcoming 12 months earnings, they have a forward PE of about around 11 or 12. So I'll leave it up to you to decide whether that is cheap enough for you or not. Number two, slowing growth. So before this whole crackdown shenanigans, Alibaba was actually growing top line between 20 to 40%, easy. But if you were to just take the last four quarters instead, they actually grew top line 8% at best in Q4 with a negative year-on-year -year comparable in Q1. So growth essentially fell off a cliff from 40% to 0%. And how can we still argue that fundamentals of Alibaba remains unchanged? So I think I'll give this point to the best for now. But let's not forget when an economy goes through an economic cycle from boom to bust, earnings for companies tend to follow suit especially when companies we are discussing actually operate in pretty cyclical industries like advertising for example. So both Alibaba and Tencent has a relatively huge advertising business and you can see that both businesses were affected by a large extent. Now, you have to make the judgement on your own on whether you think this 0% growth is long term or short term in nature and given my exposure in the company, you should probably know my bias. Which brings me to the next point. Competition is coming in hot for Alibaba. So even though we like to hypnotize and tell ourselves that, hey, everything is okay, the investment is doing good, the company is doing good. When you look at the comparables across Alibaba's competitors, things don't look okay. So it's okay to not be okay. If China was really in such a deep recession, why would Alibaba's two biggest competitors in the e-commerce space still grow at a decent pace? My argument against that revolves around two points. Firstly, JD has also seen considerable slowdown in growth in the last few quarters compared to much earlier periods, similar to Alibaba's trend. Secondly, Pintoto operates well in a recessionary period due to its value proposition. So if you want to know more about the details of why Pintoto is outperforming JD and Alibaba, I've spoken at length in this video on why P Pintoto is currently outperforming the tree. So in the long run, however, I'm not as concerned about the threats JD and Pintoto poses onto Alibaba, but I'm more afraid of ByteDance with Douyin's current influence. Unfortunately, ByteDance is currently a private company and it's hard to get any real-time data on how they have been doing. So I think this remains a space that needs to be monitored in the longer term and of course, monitored closely. Fourth, 
the SEC delisting still remains an overhang. So even though we have received a rather muted response from both the PCAOB and the SEC, the gist of the message still revolves around ensuring that China currently cooperates with the US. If not, if they don't play ball, um, they will not hesitate to pull the plug on them. So as long as they do not give the green light, um, it remains an overhang, even though um, despite how the bulls like to spin the story. Last but not least, politics. So it's a deeply nuanced and complicated matter. Many investors have different reads of the entire situation in China today. So the last two years have also emphasized the importance of storytelling and narrative selling behind many stocks and many businesses. Specifically for Alibaba, you have discussion ranging from the controlling of big tech, the reigning in of billionaires, to NIPO, to common prosperity, to the crazy amount of fines, and of course, um, China's lost decade and a population crisis. So I think there are certain elements of truths in each of those factors, but just be cognizant enough to differentiate between facts and opinions. So when you have terms um, such as uninvestable being thrown around for Chinese companies, then you probably know that we are kind of near bottom. So we'll see. So I largely disagree with many of these narratives being built on the entire basket of Chinese tech stocks. And that is also why I continue to stay invested, even though in hindsight, it looks pretty dumb. So this politics topic can be expounded into a six hour long lecture, but you are the only one that can make the judgment on whether you're comfortable or not with the risk involved. So to me, I don't even see many of these narratives as risk, but only time will tell. Now, moving on to the good part. I'll only spend a minute or so talking about the good catalyst of what we might expect because I believe many of you long-term backholders are already kept privy of the situation. I don't need to belabor the point. And also, I don't need to provide you guys with more hopium. Firstly, Alibaba is as cheap as ever. Compared to when it first IPO'd, its revenue has 16 times, gross profits has 9 times, and EBITDA has 5 times while maintaining a lower valuation. Two, regulations around tech companies do seem to be easing by a large extent, with political figures visiting corporate offices and also pledging support for the economy and growth. It's a much better response compared to two years ago. Number three, the current opening up of China might be slightly messy, but it definitely will lead the recovery in 2023. And this recovery is not only for Alibaba, but also their customers, which will ultimately show in their numbers, both corporate and individual. Number four, Alibaba's cost-cutting measures will come into effect in the subsequent few quarters. And as margins improve, investors will come crowding back to the stock. And last but not least, when a company shows significant cash flow margins, and it's significantly profitable and takes care of shareholders either in the ways of buybacks or dividends, I would believe that investors on the sidelines can never resist that temptation. So with that, I'll see you in the next video, but more importantly, I will finally see you on the moon. Goodbye.